What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to blend or morph shapes together in Adobe Illustrator. Now as you can see I have Illustrator up and running and on my screen you can see that I have a vector image of a witch's hat. I also have a vector image of a bat and then I have two circles right here. One is dark purple, the other is sort of a lilac color, and then I have a piece of text that we'll be playing with later in the video. So what I'll be doing in this video is showing you guys how to blend vector images together and show you guys some cool effects you can do with this tool. So let's get started. So right here at the top you can see that I have a vector image of a witch's hat and then one of a bat. So what I can do with these two images is use the blend tool on Illustrator and then it'll look as if the witch's hat is kind of transforming into a bat which is super cool. So what I'm going to do is select both images. So I'm going to click on the witch's hat, hold the shift key, select the bat, and then I'm going to go to my blend tool which would look like this. And then I'm going to click on the witch's hat, click on the bat, and now you can see that in between these two vectors, there's a custom shape right here that looks like it's a combination of the two. And like I was just saying, the witch's hat kind of looks like it's transforming into a bat. So actually, let me resize all this real quick. And after you use the blending option, everything becomes a group. So because I blended the witch's hat in with the bats, that became a group along with the shape that generated in between it, which would be this one. But let's say I want to move this bat all the way over here. So let me quickly resize that one more time. All right. So now we're going to double click anywhere inside of the group. And now every element that's within this group, I can now manipulate like I would a regular vector image or image in Illustrator. So if I click on this bat vector, I can now freely move that anywhere within my document. And you can now see that Illustrator generated a few more custom shapes in between our hat vector and bat vector. But there is a way for you to specify the amount of shapes in between your two vectors. So let me double click anywhere outside of this group to get back to the main screen. All right, so now we're gonna click on that group. We're gonna go up here to object and go all the way down to where it says blend and then go right here to where it says blend options. And then this window comes up. So I'm gonna click on this Dropbox right here that says smooth color. It might say specify distance or specify steps. What we want is specified steps. And you can see that specified steps is set to four. So what that means is this is the amount of custom shapes that generate in between your two vectors. So you can see right here that we have six vector images all together, including the hat and the bat vector and then four in between. So specify steps counts the amount of shapes in between your two vectors. In this case, it would be one, two, three, four custom shapes. And it does not count the vector images that we started off with. In this case, it would be the hat and the bat vector. So I'm gonna set that to about three. And now we have one, two, three specified steps or I like to say custom shapes within this group. So I'm gonna hit okay on this window. And there we go. And now if we take a look at this group, we can see that this hat right here, it looks as if it's transforming into a bat as we move our eye from left to right, like we're reading a book. But let's say after generating a custom shape in Illustrator, I just want one of these shapes. So let's say I want the middle one specifically. I don't want anything to do with this hat. I don't want this shape. I don't want this shape. And I don't want this bat vector. I just want the one in the middle. But like I was saying, all of these shapes are now in one group. But there is a way to extract them. So having this group selected, I'm going to go back up here to Object. And then I'm going to click on this button that says Expand. Then this window comes up. We're not going to mess with these settings. So we're going to hit OK. And now you can see that each shape is now on its own. It's not along a path like that's what that line was that was just here. So now each shape is on its own. But there's only one problem. They're still in a group. So what we can do is hit this ungroup button right here. Or if for whatever reason it's not there, you can go up here to objects and tap ungroup. And now if I use my selection tool here, I can click and drag 
resize, recolor, and do whatever I want with this custom image because it's now on its own. And the same goes for all these other images that generated along the path that we had earlier that kind of blends this hat vector and this bat vector in together. So that's one thing that's cool about Illustrator's blending tool here. So let me show you guys how to do that with color. So as you can see, I have two circles on my document. One is dark purple, the other is sort of a lilac purple here. And what I wanna do is figure out what color I would get if I were to mix this purple into this purple. So I'm gonna click and drag to kind of select those circles, like so. And then I'm gonna go back to my blend tool, which would be right here. I'm gonna tap on this circle, tap on this circle. And now you can see that those two shapes blended together. So now I'm gonna double click to go into the group. And now that I'm in this group, I can now reposition and resize each of these circles. But now let's go back to the main screen. So I'm gonna double click anywhere outside of the group and then select the group. I'm gonna go back up here to object, go back to blend and then blend options. And then the Dropbox where it says spacing, I'm gonna click on that and go to specified steps. And because of this number here, now we know that there's 191 circles that blend this dark purple circle that we started off with, with this lilac purple here. There's 191 circles in between. So I'm gonna change that to about four. And now we have one, two, three, four circles in between our starting and ending vectors, which are circles. But let's set that to an odd number so that way a circle will generate right here in the center. So I'm gonna set that to five. And now you can see that we have a circle that generated in the center of our group. And that specific color of the circle is the color I would get if I were to mix this lilac purple here with this dark purple here. So that's something cool about Illustrator's blending tool. It not only blends the shapes, but it also blends the colors. So I'm gonna hit okay on this window real quick. I'm gonna go back to this group, but let's say I wanna blend two completely different colors together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this group again, double click. And now I'm gonna change the color of just this circle here. I'm gonna change that to a completely different color. So I'm gonna go to my color options. I'm gonna set that to like a blue color, like this light blue color here. And now as you can see, because I changed this blue color here, everything that's in between our starting and ending vectors, that now changed. And that's what's good about Illustrator's blending tool. It'll quickly adjust to whatever changes that we make to our starting and ending vectors. But since we're in this group, I can do whatever I want with this circle. Like, let me resize it real quick. So I'm gonna make that into an oval like so. And you can see that Illustrator changed not only the color of these circles or ellipses now, it also changed the shape because now I changed this into an oval and so did everything that's in between. So let me hit Command Z to undo that. And if we go back to our blending option right here, I'm not gonna click on it, but you can see on the icon here that there is a square and a circle. So let's act like the square is our starting vector and the circle is our ending vector. And then that little shape that's in between, that's gonna be the shape that generates in between the two. So that way the square looks like it's transforming into the circle. And if you wanna change that within your Illustrator document, then you can simply do that by switching the position of either the square or the circle. And with this blending tool, you can also get super cool text effects. So you can see in my document that I have the word Halloween in text, but let me change the color of that real quick. Change that to a dark green. Okay, so the blend tool, it doesn't really work on text. So you gotta turn your text into a regular vector image. So I'm gonna go up here to objects. I'm gonna hit expand. Those settings are good, so I'm gonna hit okay. And now each and every letter of the word Halloween is now its own shape, but it's all in one group and we're gonna keep it like that. So we're not gonna ungroup these letters. So what I am gonna do is resize it real quick. And now I'm gonna make a duplicate of this group. So I'm gonna hold the option key. I'm gonna click and drag this group so that way it can create a whole another one or make a duplicate of it. All right. 
And now I'm gonna change that to like a dark green color. So I'm gonna click on just this one group here. I'm gonna change that to like a darker green. Like so. And now we're gonna take both of these groups and blend them together. So I'm gonna click anywhere and drag them to select them. And then I'm gonna go to my blending tool right here. I'm gonna click on the one, click on the one below it. And you can see that there's lots of text that overlaps with one another, but that's because both groups are so close together. So what I'm gonna do is double click to go into the group. And now we have our first group that we made it first and then our next group. So I'm gonna space those out real quick, like so. And you can see that Illustrator generated one, two, three specified steps in between our first group and our last group. Nothing about the letters in either group changed. So instead it just changed the color because that's the only difference between the two is the color. But what I am gonna do is take this group that's down here and I'm gonna resize that so that way it's smaller than our first group. So I'm gonna make that smaller here. And you can see that we're getting a good text effect going on here. So you can see that there's lots of the word Halloween and it kind of overlaps one another. So I'm gonna take our first group here. I'm gonna right click, go to arrange, and I'm gonna bring that to the front. So that way it's in front of everything. We want that to be the center of attention. And now I'm gonna bring this word Halloween. I'm gonna bring that up. Then I'm gonna click our first group and kind of place it in front of the smaller group, like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna click anywhere to get out of our group. And then I'm gonna select the group again. Go to Object, go to Blend, Blend Options. And then I'm gonna click this Dropbox. I'm gonna go to Specified Steps. And then I'm gonna set that to like a big number. Let's say 100. And if we look down here, we can see that the word Halloween, it, it give, it's given like a little 3D effect. And if I zoom into this letter O here, you can see that there's a color transition going from the color of our first group into the color of the group that's behind it, like so. But let's say I wanna change the color of the text, but not the color of the transition. So when you're doing this text effect, there's two ways you can do this. So I'm gonna double click to get inside of this group here. I'm gonna select our first group, and then I'm gonna add like a little stroke to it, but I'm not gonna add a super thick line width to the stroke. So I'm gonna make it the smallest stroke width possible, which would be 0.25 points, like so. And you can see that we have like a little stroke going on here. And I'm gonna make that the same color of the text, which is green, this specific green here. And you can see that it didn't really make a change compared to how we just had it. So now that I gave a stroke to this first group here, I can now change the color of the group. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna change that green to like a light green, like a sort of a yellowish green. This one's good. And now we can see that the word Halloween has some sort of a 3D effect, but we still see a little bit of that new green within the letters, but that's because specified steps we only have 100. So what we can do is go back to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and we can set that to an even bigger number. I think the maximum you can have it at is like a 1,000, I think. Yeah, it's 1,000. But after applying a bigger number, you can see that we see more of the stroke instead of our new green that we applied. So we're gonna hit OK on this window. And that's really given a 3D effect. So that's looking pretty good. But another way you can do this, hold on, let me make a copy of this group here. This one we're not gonna mess with anymore. So let me go back to this one, double click to get in there. I'm gonna select that one group and I'm gonna take stroke off. I'm not gonna have any more stroke. So I'm gonna go to that color option up here and then hit none. So we have no stroke, it goes back to the way it was. Now I'm gonna select the one group that we have in the front, which would be this one. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it. Then I'm gonna go back to the main screen. So I'm gonna double click anywhere outside of that group. And then we're gonna paste. So Command V. 
and now we have the word Halloween like how we had it before we turned it into a vector image so now I'm gonna change the color of this real quick let's change that to a black all right and now we're gonna reposition it in front of our group here may have to adjust some small parts like I'm doing I like I have to zoom in just to see if I aligned it correctly and there we go so now we have a cool 3d effect and from here I can change the color of just this one group here and nothing will change about the transitions that are right here in this group so let's change that to a dark green and there we go and yeah that's something super cool you can do with text along with Illustrator's blending tool. And yeah, that's how you do it. That is how you blend or morph shapes together in Adobe Illustrator. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I